Okay. As you can see, Supply Chain Hub sits nicely on, on well, any of the menus. I, I've got it attached to the Manufacturing Manager, but you could equally put this on inventory form or, or indeed uh, purchasing or order management. So it, entirely up to you. I, I saw this as a logical place to put it. You can see here we've also got Blitz Report on uh, on our menu as well. I'll just start by opening uh, the Supply Chain Hub. Starting with the, uh, the initial form, th this is all about trying to pinpoint your down to you know particular item or, or bill of materials product and you've got really you've got a great selection range here now now this is uh, in itself this is a blitz report so for those of you who are not familiar with blitz report blitz report is um, a mechanism for rapid reporting in oracle ebs and getting data very quickly into uh, file formats such as excel csv etc uh, and it's uh, it's really the fastest way to get uh, data out of uh, oracle ebs so it, it's much much faster than xml and uh, all of those other types of tools but be like publisher you know, XML. This particular search form is uh, fully configurable. Uh, in itself, it's a report. So if, this, if there are fields on here that uh, you don't need, wish to hide, uh, or if you need to add any additional search criteria for your product, you know, narrowed down, then you can certainly do that. So we'll start here by um, popping in some criteria. And as you go through, you, you can also multi-select. So this is a feature that, that's not not common in, in Oracle EBS. So if you wanted to multi-select, what you do is you, you tick the um, multiple value field here, and then we've got the ability to build up multiple values within a single field. So you see that that becomes quite flexible. It's similar to um, the ASCP planner workbench where you can uh, do the among functionality. So those of you familiar with ASCP, that's um, that, that's the same sort of feature, but it's a lot lot slicker and a lot quicker. Over here for MRP users, we've got the, the plan. So th this particular hub is, is not uh, only for MRP users. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, it covers as order management, inventory, works, uh, works order, bill of materials, purchasing. So you've got all of the supply chain modules in one central place. So the whole idea behind it is that you don't have to leave your, you know, you don't have to keep switching responsibilities. I mean, that, that's the flexibility. We've also got the ability to flip your organization and then you can run all the different types of reports you would expect from within the hub. So for example, you've got the inventory item overview, which includes all of the attributes, the material transactions, uh, the on-hand quantities, all of those types of reports. And we'll be stepping through those as we go through this presentation and I'll show you the how those are how they look, but we won't run them yet. Like I said, I'm just building up the criteria here. And so I've I've put in here make, I put in uh, I put in a couple of exceptions from the MRP plan, but you could equally just build up more and more criteria in here. You see here we've got the operating unit, we've got the organization name, and so on. You can put drawing numbers in, uh, basically whatever you need to do. You can also, if, so if you're constantly doing the uh, the same type of search on the same kind of products, then you'll find that you use the recent uh, search functionality here. So that will just basically take your last, uh, your last searches that you've done from the supply and demand. But as we go through, I will explain these in more and more detail. Right, now starting with the search, uh, you see here we've got a, a list of all of our um, all of our items and we can step through and we can change the, the number of levels. Uh, so at this stage, we're, we're just showing one level. And, and of course, this is our top level here. And then over to the right, as we go through, got all the different uh, types of uh, availability. So you can see whether the product's uh, active, you can see the um, on hand quantity. Over here, you can see what's been reserved and uh, equally you can just basically, you can build up here. These these are tailorable as well. This is just in the middle of um, doing some reconfiguration, which is why some of these uh, fields are, are not really wide enough. So we will we will sort that out. But it is configurable. So if you want to display things uh, yourself, you can you can do that using the um, there's a form available within a standard form within the CRM setup responsibility, which will allow you to configure the widths of these uh, fields as you require. So just to go across to the right a bit further, you see here for, for those customers that are using MRP, we also have the exceptions over there to the right as well. So 
things like orders with compression days. So you see, as you hover over any of the fields, it will actually display the, the, the full explanation anyway. So, so that's particularly useful and not, not something that's widely used throughout Oracle, but it is in a couple of the forms in inventory, for example, the on-hand form. As I mentioned to you, from this stage, you can now run a report. So let's just start by running one of the reports. And it does take the input from the row you're on. So if I was to run this report now, run it just for that top uh, item. But if I, if I select multiple products here, for example, then run the report, it will take those as input parameters to these reports. So if we now run the inventory uh, items report, it should deliver us with the, those three items that, that are there. So organization code, as you would expect on the left, organization name, and you notice that these are already filtered. So there's no need to reformat as you would get with the, uh, the age old CSV file export type where you have to resize fields, you have to um, change data types. Sometimes it can be quite annoying, especially on product uh, where, where you, I worked for a book uh, manufacturer in my last project and uh, they used to have these ISBN numbers, which were 13 characters long. And one of the things we had to constantly do was reformat the data on the actual product number. And it used to just add extra time that was unnecessary. So the Enginatics team have taken the trouble to to go through and, and format in the in the Excel engine so that they don't have to you don't have to do any additional work. So as we go across, you see all of the product attributes you would expect. And again, this is a configurable report, so very easy to drop columns from the report or add and you know add or subtract the columns as you see fit. So quite straightforward. Just pop that one over to one side for now. We'll just run the next report just so you can get a flavor. So material transactions, as you would expect, this is effectively the same as going into the material transactions form. We can open up the material transaction form directly anyway, and I'm going to show you that shortly. So, so here we've got the material transactions form, sorry, the material transactions uh, report. Um, and in my particular case, I haven't configured my Excel right, but uh, it's a double click there. As we go across, you see, as you would expect, the primary quantity, the sub inventory, the, the transfer sub inventory. So you got all of your standard material transactions across from, from left to right, uh, all of those columns that you would expect. And, and then, of course, we got the, the transaction quantity at the, at the end. Similarly, what you could do is you could just basically do a right click. So from any of these rows, you can go off and you can, you can, Instead of running a report, you can just go off and have a look at the form. And so let's just go and, uh, and open up the material transaction. So you can see it automatically populates for you the product code and the date range. Well, we probably don't want to put a, a, a from date because it's quite an old system uh, here. So if I was to run that, you see we've got um, we've got our material transactions form that opens up and I'll just uh, resize that field. So as we go down across here, you see here we've got all of our standard form features you would expect. And you know, this, this functionality um, is like the old Zoom you used to get with, with Oracle. Um, they, they don't have it so much now because they use personalization to, to achieve this type of thing. But you can go off and you can look at your bill of material and uh, as I said, it will take in the input parameter from either your component or your main item. And then you can see you've got your bill of materials form open. As we go through, there are obviously other functions we could go. We could look at the routing, the where used report, item cost, all of the, the forms that you would expect to have are available. So if I was to flip the uh, organization, for example, you see here there isn't a plan in uh, M2, but that doesn't stop it from allowing us to utilize the functionality uh, because you don't have to have a plan to use this hub. You see here we're now in the uh, M2 organization. So it's really nifty. You don't have to keep going out, changing your organization, reloading your form. Uh, if, you, if you get my point of view, it's uh, quite straightforward to, to do. Uh, I, I know certainly Mark on, on this call uh, is an advanced planner advanced supply chain planner user one of the tasks that we've got is is basically to transform this hub into advanced planning and, and that's certainly on our radar to do uh, as a replacement for the um, sort of convoluted planner workbench uh, in, in advanced supply chain planning so 
given time and, and hopefully before year end, we'll have this into the advanced uh, supply planning function as well. But, but anyway, as I mentioned, uh, you can use it just with straightforward uh, order management, inventory and purchasing without having to have manufacturing. And, and it's really quite handy, certainly for customer services and buyers uh, to, to be able to have this kind of form where you can basically narrow down into a, into a really tight uh, zone of items and then basically run all your, your reports that you would need to have as a buyer or as a customer services person. So, you know, when you, you start to go down into those other reports, you know, you've got purchase orders, headers and lines. So, so we'll just run the, um, the order management one. And, and this is very similar to the order organizer, but without the painful hour glass weight that you would have from order organizer if you were to export your orders from there you see here we go straight to excel again it's fully formatted and as we go from right to left you've got all your customer details you've got your uh, order line details you've got when it was ordered which warehouse which ship method we keep going across we've got the quantity ordered we've got the promise date when it was sh scheduled to ship when it was actually shipped and what the ship quantity was so you see here we've also got the status of the order everything you would expect uh, and as mentioned it is blitz report so you can create reports yourself let's just have a look at how we do that so from any form you can put blitz report and that that's for any standard form not just this supply chain hub and this prevents you well prevents you this <laughs> improves your life no end because you can then go off and run any report without having to wait for you know like you typically would with the export function uh, so let's go, just go and have a look at what, what would uh, happen if we created a new report. I'm just going to create a new report from, from standard. I'm just going to shift my left to right here so, so that I don't keep uh, having to move my screen. Okay, so let's just give this a name. Uh, we're just going to call this demo from the hub. Okay. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to uh, check items, uh, last updated in the last x number of days now i've done this before and <laughs> i had to, a little bit of stage fright and i forgot how to write an sql which is quite funny because i've been writing sqls for about 30 years but <laughs> anyway let's see if i do better today right so mp dot star and then we go from mtl system so any of you that have got a little bit of technical knowledge or perhaps uh, have written some scripts before, you could typically drop them straight into the, into the form here uh, and then run them. So if you've got your favorite scripts or perhaps you've got a, a consultant who sits alongside you, it's got a little bit of technical know-how, then this is a really fast way of getting data out of your system, but also getting uh, reports approved and authorized and, and version tracked as well. So I'll, I'll just... Just finish this uh, little sequel. One equals one. We always have to do that. It's a nice, uh, and I'll explain that in a minute. I think we're going to join the two tables up here and we'll do it on organization ID. That seems to be sensible. Equals MSIV dot organization. Hopefully, if I've typed this correctly and not put any typos in there, I think that's more or less run. That's this, this particular function is only available for a developer. I'm in as a developer, hence I can write a report. If you were just an ordinary business user, then as I said, you'd have to have somebody with the privilege to do so. Now, within the Blitz report tool, it's very quick to create new parameters because we can reuse parameters. So we don't have to think too hard about how we're going to do that. So one of the things you'd probably want to do is to put an organization code into your report. We don't have to, but why not and then the other thing that i'm interested in because i'm looking at updates that have happened in last update within a number of days so what i can do is i can reuse something that's been taken before been used before i haven't had to create that you see it's put a default value in there for me as well it understands the format so, so list of values here for example here we're using a number the way in which it works is it does a comparison here on the real code on the table and then it takes this bind variable here. And then in this case, we've done a little calculation versus this date and the number of days. Now we can assign it. So we assign it to a different, we can assign it to user. I'm going to assign it to myself. It doesn't make much sense, but I, I want to be the only one that can see this because it's still in development. You see here, we now get the version. So immediately we've got version here. So we can say, okay, this is, uh, this is initial 
a initial test and as you migrate through your different environments you can export these reports without doing uh, any any legwork basically it creates a, a file that you can then import into your next environment as you go between system test or development system test user acceptance test and so on <clears throat> you can take these reports with you obviously this report is not very complex and so you might not need to do so and then you can assign it to a category and this helps with sifting and sorting. You see here, we've got all different categories. We've got our toolkits, uh, which we've been talking about recently at the uh, different Oracle user groups. And, and these are obviously different categories of reports that, that help different functions of the organization, whether it's support or business operation, the data management, MDM type of reports and so on. Or there's a, the database tuner type reports there as well. I'm not going to categorize this. I'm just going to go ahead and run it. This is at this point, it will test whether I've typed everything correctly. Uh, you see it brought in my uh, parameters in immediately. And now I'm going to go ahead and run. So fingers crossed, Glenn, do you do a good job? I'm not sure, but we'll find out. Good. Okay, finally, I've got this one right. Okay, so we're going to go from left to right. What have we got? We've got columns I selected. We're not particularly interested in these ID columns. And I'm going to show you how we get rid of those in a second. As we go across to the right, you see I'll, there's an interesting one, segment one, and so on. So let's just let's just advance a little bit further from there. And the way in which you do that, and this, this function is given to the user, the developer also has it and can share the template. But here, we, what we're going to do is we're going to create a, a new template whereby we lay out the report. And we're going to remove all the ID columns because we don't want any ID columns. We'll just remove those. And what we do is we just say, OK, hide all. And then basically we're going to come across here and we're just going to reselect everything we want. I'm going to go across to my first segment one would be the first column I want. That's that one. And then I'm going to pop that over there. And then we just build it up. Basically, you're now building up the complexity of the report, the layout. And this is something that's done at either a user or um, a developer level. I'm interested in these, these particular items. So I'll just pop them over in one go. And then you can reorganize as you need, need to. So there's our report. We're ready to go. We've created a report in a matter of minutes. And now I'm going to go ahead and give that uh, template a name. So if, uh, let's just call it item layout something like that and i'm going to save that okay i'll just do that oh sorry that was my, my fault it's obviously wants me to use the other one let me just go back and uh, rename it edit and do it properly now we've got it let's go ahead and run the report now we should just have our reduce layout which is uh, we can see the wood through the trees and we can see we've got a very quick report. So from a user perspective, that, that's the, the flexibility. From a developer perspective, it, it's obviously they, they don't need to specify all the columns. I'm not suggesting that, you know, as a developer, you would probably write a report as simplistic as that. You, you probably would specify, you know, a finite number of columns, but still the user has flexibility to create the layout or indeed the developer can share a layout. As I mentioned, there's no XML, it's just straight into Excel and it goes through the standard concurrent manager. So we use obviously current request mechanism. There's only one program that's registered. So you see, we haven't had to go through that extensive registration, you know, all those pitfalls that you get, which delay projects, delay delivery of reports, because we've got a single report called Blitz report, and we just then prefix it with the name of the report you gave it. You can schedule these reports as you would expect. You can send them to user groups or to groups of users. We use all of the standard output formatting options. Uh, so as I mentioned, uh, you know, you can uh, one step further, in fact, uh, within that template, you can actually specify additional emails and different functions as well within there. For example, if you want to send your output to a business intelligence data warehouse type, we have the ability to create those reports in those using those different types of output. And I'll just show you that uh, as we go through it, as I close this off. As we first come in here, we've got the ability to change the layout here. 
uh, or, or sorry, the file type. There's also some different functions here where you can send to custom post process. If, for example, you wanted to produce a PDF, there is the capability to send it to a Unix shell and then you run a program on top and then it will create a, a PDF file for you. Let me go back into, uh, into the hub. I hope that gives you a, an idea for how quickly uh, you can create reports and how flexible it is. Like I said, all of these reports are available. You would be able to add additional ones into this list, but not to mention you can also come in here and run your reports. So you could actually make a category of reports and then from this menu, you could have another list of reports. So you wouldn't just be restricted to running uh, supply chain reports from here. Okay. England, that was a great, that was a great presentation. Um, I wonder if Mark has any questions that he'd like to. Yes. <laughs> No, thanks, Glenn. That was great. Yeah, I can see a lot of benefits. Um, obviously, I'm interested in the development, how we get on with ASCP um, and next steps on that. But from this point of view, we have a lot of queries that we currently run to do with stock and stock management and how mm. we move them around, obviously, incorporating the material transactions and things. So, yeah, the, I can see a lot of uses for, for what we can do with this so far. Not, not so many questions, but yeah. <laughs> You're generally quite happy with uh, what you've seen so far. Good. Um, okay, so, so let's just push on to the next uh, tab. So this is your running balance that so you would expect from a, a good supply and demand form. As you can see here, we've got all our different types of demand and supply at the row level. And then on the identifier, we've got the ability to drill down into any of these transactions. For example, if you want to go and have a look at the sales order, it will open up the sales order form. So you don't have to, again, you don't have to have constantly um, having to keep going away and, and digging into to multi-level forms. This is a lot a lot nicer way to, to, to do things, I would suggest. Similarly, we can go and have a look at a move order. It's the same for, for all of these. We've got, got this capability to go on, drill down into further details. And then over here on the, on the available quantity, We've got a running total here, so obviously minus one, and we run down and it calculates as, you know, as normal per supply and demand uh, form. And then if you were using MRP, then we've got what it's been pegged to. So we put the pegging at row level, which is not like it uh, within the advanced supply planning, where they put it down in a sub form, which is of no use to you at all because you can't export it. So on the right hand side, we've got our exceptions. So quite handy again, it's a nice single view. We don't have, the, uh, you know, we don't have to run around and uh, drill down into multi forms uh, as you do with standard Oracle. As we go across to the right, we've got further functions. Sorry, we haven't got any further functions. We've got it all on one form, sorry. We've got uh, over here, we've got the number of compression days would be in here. On the left, we've also got, got the PO confirmation uh, number, if there was one. Opening up a purchase order could be done uh, quite happily from here. A lot of this is governed by what access rights you've got. If you've only got the ability to inquire, then it would govern that against your, your setup, as you would expect, really, from, from a security basis. As we then go across, uh, let me just get across to the detail. You see here, what we've got here is we've got our item attribute details. So, you know, all of the, the attributes that you would expect to have are here in this tab, you know, the weight, who's the planner, what are the planning attributes down here, what categories have been assigned. This is really handy rather than having to go up the top and have a look They're there. Now, going back to, to this functionality I mentioned, if you wanted to, to multi-select and then go into your details, then you can simply down arrow through as you go. Um, so you see here, we've got all of those items now in view rather than just the one, very, very useful. And then over to the right, we've also got forecasts. So these are the old MRP forecast tables. What this is basically is if you're using forecasting, I don't know which mechanism you're, you're using there, Mark, um, for getting your forecast, forecasting in. Oh, that was not very, really, uh, Andy, we'll block that. <laughs> well, we're using Demantra at the moment. Right. Okay. So that that you would not probably use these old MRP tables, uh, I take it. No, no, we wouldn't. No. Right. Okay. That's something we'd have to have a look at once we're doing ASCP, whether we create additional links into, say, Demantra. But I, I guess those forecasts are all collected into the data collections anyway, even though you're using Demantra, right? Exactly. Yes. Yeah, so they're all yeah. visible. So, so we'll just pick it up from the MSC uh, tables 
being the MSC demands, right? Exactly. Um, with with the type of forecast. From from here, obviously, you can run your different planning reports. Um, so, if for example, we wanted to run a pegging report, we could run that uh, from from here. I think we've we've mentioned before, Mark, that we've also got pegging reports already for the advanced supply chain planning. And I'll show you those shortly. Uh, again, as we scroll to the right, we've got what quantity has been pegged, you know, what it's been pegged to, what kind of, you know, whether it's a make or a buy item. And then we go across, across to the right uh, with all different other types of columns there as well. Okay, I'll just quickly nip across to, um, to ASCP and I'll, I'll show you what we can do in the advanced supply chain planning because we've already started working on a number of reports for, from here. And I'll just show you some of those because uh, you'll, you'll probably want those in your Blitz report in, installation, right? Okay. Let's just nip across to the supply and uh, plan a workbench. What we did here is we added the planner reports uh, that we've done so far. You see here, we've got a horizontal plan which is quite a nice one. I don't know if you, do you use a horizontal plan, Mark? Yeah, quite a lot. You, you do, right, okay. Well, uh, did I show you, I think I showed you pegging and I showed you exceptions previously. Is it, would you like me to refresh those? Uh, uh, yes, please. I think we um, we didn't quite get around to finishing it. So right, yeah. okay. So from, from an exceptions uh, viewpoint, you would basically select the, the plan. So do you have multiple plans or are you just having one single source of truth for your... Just the one at the moment. Obviously, just we're, the one. We're, we're looking to implement it globally, and then we'll have multiple. Mm. But just one at the moment. Okay. And are you using um, ATP from the plan? Do you use ATP as the plan output, or yes, we do. Oh, you do. Right. Okay. From here, then you would basically uh, select your exceptions. You could put in your planner code as you would expect, uh, and then you would start to select which exceptions you're you're interested in. Do you have? Do, do you look at exceptions? Because Oracle is is designed to be by exception, planned by exception, but not many customers do. I was just wondering if you do. As part of our standard process, yes, we should. Um, we have planned exceptions that you look at daily, weekly, monthly. Yes. So you've got your daily, weekly, your monthly. Okay, that, that's very much like uh, how, how the previous customers that I've worked at work. Okay, that's good to hear. Uh, but, you know, whether people do it because it's a little bit onerous in uh, in standard Oracle to do these uh, exceptions because of the, the long-winded mechanism of writing reports uh, or at least queries and then delivering the reports you know it's all on screen whereas this can be emailed on a daily or a weekly or a monthly basis for you to give you those late sales or whatever late for replenish um, late replenishment for sales and so on let's just select a, a few and and see if we can uh, see if we can get a get this to return us some data I say I'm going a little bit off piece, but it doesn't matter. I'm sure we can get some exceptions here because this is quite old. So let's just do a few late ones. So we've got late replenishment for sales and there we've got late supply. We could do overdue. Have you used Blitz at all, Mark? Yeah, I know AJ's obviously using it, but um, I just yeah. wondered if, if you've played, been... played around with it a bit. Um... Oh, you have a little, a little toy with it. Great. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me just... Uh bring in a few more so we do past past due orders how about that right so i think that's enough uh, criteria in there you could obviously put dates in and, and what have you but let's let's run that and see if it delivers a, an output because when you do this through the form you're supposed to tick each exception aren't you when you've done them which i don't think anybody ever does but uh, i think that was a, the functionality and some of the some of the exceptions are, are quite tricky in terms of days and when you're trying to analyze what what's going on it's number of compression days and then due due date versus uh, you know all these different scheduled dates uh, i i always find it, it it completely confusing and in the end you don't use them at least this you can configure it to, to how you want it to be uh, and then hopefully open up possibilities. So whilst that's running, we, we don't need to, obviously that, that's quite a, a lengthy report there. You can see here, it's going through the concurrent manager. You saw the status on the screen there. Th this is, uh, like I said, um, let's just go back uh, here. If we go here, you see here now we've got the MRP, MSC uh, exceptions. Um, and if we look at the output from here, 
we've got all of these different reschedules and so on. Now, if we were to filter by the, the different groups, and we can do that, and we just go with these ones here. And you see what I was saying? So you've got the planner, and then as we go to the right, we've got the exception quantity, and then what the order is that, that's hinging on that, and, and so on. You see here, as you would expect. Now, if I take this filter off, go and have a look at some of the other groups. Uh, let's have a look at the reschedules. These are all the ones that it's, it's recommending need to be moved in or out, which, which obviously customers would probably be quite active on, I would have thought, to make sure that the plan's up to date. You can configure what, what columns you want to display and, and how you want the, the layout to be. You know, it is quite straightforward to do that uh, using those templates that I just showed you. But if we go back and have a look at the next report, and if I look at, uh, for example, what we do here is we're going to do the horizontal plan. So I just pop in horizontal there. As you would expect, you put your plan in here and you're going to put in that organization. And you can then build up your complexity here, uh, whether you want this in periods or weeks. Well, we can put it in week buckets. Uh, why not? This this is taking the preference preferences from your from your planner workbench setup as well. This was delivered actually uh, very recently. In fact, we've only just in fact it's still really in prototyping mode. But but I I recognise the limitation of the horizontal plan. I don't know what you think about it, Mark. But it, it's difficult to get it into Excel, right? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of you look at it on screen, make a yeah. comment what you want to remember and and move on. Yes, exactly. This horizontal plan obviously is we've got all of the, the supply and demand types here. And then you've got the ability to run this for multiple items and you can run it for multiple organizations. So you can effectively uh, look at your projected available balance, whatever else. You filter there too, eh? Glenn, you yes, exactly. Your PAB is probably quite, quite interesting. A lot of co companies look at this uh, projected available and, and it's quite easy to see it now in a in a sort of condensed uh, view. Uh, you can see where your, your problem areas are, are, are coming on, uh, you know, and you know you can multi multi select uh, on there as well. So, does that look interesting to you? Would it, is this something you would run in your you would use in your organisation? Yes, yeah, so obviously we've not really had the option to do this before, so we work with our uh, development team to get certain extracts that are never quite as we need, and they're always. Right weekly monthly or something and no one has the availability to do it on their own okay so, so you would you would probably use this one i would imagine quite heavily <laughs> um yeah because yeah, i mean i i used to work uh, i used to train uh, at um pearson and, and rico and canon on uh, ascp and and these everybody used to say well the planner the horizontal plan's no good it's yeah. not 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 of any use uh, because you can just see one item and one org so we we've basically harnessed with, with the Blitz report, we use the, the, the same APIs as Oracle. So there's no deviation on the calculation. Uh, we just pass the item and, and the org and the planner. Uh, and so you, your results are gonna be the same as, as, as ACP. So it's a single source of truth. You, you, don't have, uh, you don't have any doubts that the report's not computing in, in the wrong way. So, so you do have that, that uh, reassurance uh, there. So, so I see this, this report here as, as being a big plus uh, for, for our team, you know, and, and on top of that, obviously when we get the, the hub to replace the, the planner workbench, at least you're, you're going to get yourself in, in a, a, a step forward at least because yeah. you could schedule these reports uh, and just have them sent sent around to, to the mm -hmm. planners i don't know if you're trying to encourage them to use uh, <laughs> to, in, to actually use the on, online system but you know for, yeah. for, for familiarity level you could certainly do that we're doing a lot of um obviously making sure the plan's correct it requires a lot of data cleansing at the moment yes uh, so i know we talked about some of the mdm ones but especially the item master Xbox, you showed it on screen um, in the supply hub. Yes. About the planning attributes, obviously, lead time and things are really important for us at the moment. Right. So well, like that, that and reviewing them on mass is what we need. Okay. I mean, that that's very straightforward uh, to do. So um, we could go back into um, the planner reports. Um, let's just 
show you show, show you a few good things there because master data we've been doing quite a lot with master data lately i'll just open one of these and i'm this is just so i can open the form <laughs> i'm just going to go into setup and i'm going to um i'm going to show you a a, a good little uh, report that will keep your life uh, or at least make your lives a lot easier one of the recent developments that we we've made is uh, the audit table changes by column port i've already <coughs> set my preferences up because one of the things you can do with blitz report is if you run a report often with the same parameters is you can save your your preference or at least you can save a report's worth of preferences so you then don't have to keep filling out these different variables but or all parameters what you do here is you set up audit on let's say mtl system items and you would set your columns you're interested in your lead times your you know all those different attributes that you're interested in and then you pick them using this this audit selection function now you see here i've i've enabled audit on atp flag i've enabled it on cost of sales expense planner code segment one but it's just a couple of clicks and we can add in all the different lead times or you can yeah. add in all the different lead times and then it will keep keep tabs on them so in case things are shifting around mm -hmm. this is certainly a way of auditing your your data and then you could actually add criteria into the report which says okay when these conditions are met then i want it triggered as an exception and that's that's quite straightforward to do so you take this as a, a template so this is a generic report if you like and what we're doing here is we're allowing you to join to different tables like mtl parameters for the organization code and all of these different audit tracked uh, columns as well so then you know you with your additional logic in play which, which is literally a few lines of code you'd be able to see who's changed what when and then it become more of an exception report rather than a full dump that somebody's got to go through and sift through. Uh, does that make sense? Uh, yeah, definitely. Was that the sort of thing you you'd be looking at? So yeah. if if we run this report on the left, we've got our table, the date at which uh, the update was done. Now this could be update, delete, or insert. Um, and then across here we've got uh, the organisation. Uh, the item description, you know, segment uh, was was what I selected in the in the parameters, um, and then here we're auditing on process costing enabled and ATP flag, and these have been flipped, uh, you know, from old to new. Uh, if you were to try and run, I don't know if you've ever looked at the audit in System Administrator Mark, but those reports don't make a lot of sense <laughs> if you yeah. if you've ever tried to use them. I, I'll show you what I mean. Uh, so if we go across into system administrator have you been here is this something you use yourself mark audit trail yep so we, we've um obviously we've enabled this for any formula changes and things like that as well track them obviously for almost legal reasons yes Yes. Okay. So that that's good that at least you're. But did did people get concerned when you say I need to enable audit? Do they say, oh, that might blow up the performance or yes. something like. Right. Well, okay. Why it's 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 only uh, enabled on selected things at the moment. I, I just did an article on that because um, we've got obviously with Blitz Report as well. You've got um, you've got the database toolkit, which is basically. Uh, what you can do is you can do a before and after analysis of um, of what happens when you enable audit. Um, so you can see if there's any degradation of performance by simply running those um, blitz reports. Um, are you familiar with those ones? Do, do you have a friendly DBA that you work with? Uh, we do, yeah, that they yeah. obviously monitor this. Yes, so that they'll be using something called a well, more than likely AWR if they have it enabled i don't know if, if they've got it installed in, in your but most companies that are running sizable installations do have this diagnostic uh, tool uh, which is you know for analyzing and so the team here has basically got um, extended that functionality uh, it's the autom automatic workload repository so that we can pinpoint to the line of code and the name of the package um, so you could basically put in an audit on <laughs> you could do a database 
performance summary audit on audit. Um, so you could tell, you know, you could basically dis dispel the myth that adding audit doesn't actually cause a problem. Uh, and, and here you would be armed with facts to do so. And, and that's, you know, this particular report would be one of the ones you could, you could use, which would basically go off and analyze uh, what, what's happened within a particular package. Uh, and then you could do stats and, and make proper benchmarks. And then you could say, okay, well, you know, we've successfully tested that this audit isn't causing us a problem and, and just enable it. Just basically takes the mystique out of uh, audit. So one of my recent articles is, is all about that, really. Um, so I'll share that with you afterwards.